Hi, it's Dr. Joy Asha, and I just wanted to share a little bit about what I'm what I'm feeling right now. It's a beautiful day here in Perth. I'm out walking my dogs. Sensational weather, and yet I'm feeling sad. And I just wanted to talk into that a little bit. So last night I was on a course, and I did a session with uh, one of the other attendees, and I went into a memory that I had only been aware, become aware of last December when my sister mentioned it and it was like a fight that I had when I was a child and it was about something I really really wanted for my life and I was pretty much just crushed like a bug and made to conform and reflecting that and how my dream was not important and how I wasn't allowed and how I conformed and became the good girl that just did what she was told and did what was right from then on. Reflecting on how that has shaped the choices in my life is quite interesting. To get to a point of you know being 50 and to realize how unimportant the person that I am has been in my relationships. Not so much with my girlfriends, but in my you know my long-term marriage relationship. It's quite sobering and yes I created it um, because of the energy and, and the who I was and, and what I learned from that moment and, and obviously before that as well because I was about 15 so it was already there but this was kind of like a defining moment like a boom um, was to be I, I, to validate myself um, through my accomplishments and how good I was and I became this all singing all dancing um, you know, accomplisher. Look how amazing I am. Look how much I can do. You know, I can juggle and cook and do the bookkeeping at the same time. And to get to the end of a really long-term relationship and to realize that you were just a supporting actor in somebody else's play and that you, your thoughts and your opinions and your wants and your needs were only important or only allowed if they aligned with the other person's um, is quite painful. And in reflection, obviously, at that point too, to look back on that person who I was a few years ago and to know that who I was and what I wanted was fuzzy because I didn't really have a shape of my own and I didn't really know who I was, but I just knew who I was was not what I was being. And so to go on the journey of being able to leave and then on the self-healing journey to get to the point where only now, a couple of years later, am I actually feeling into what I want and what I need because my wants and needs were never important. Now, what I want to talk about though is the sadness. <laughs> Because the difference also is that now I allow my emotions. And this is really important. This is really the lesson in this video. So I'm out here on this beautiful day and I'm feeling sad and I'm allowing it and I'm breathing into it. And there's a really beauty. There's a real, uh, there's a beauty in pure sadness. It's like crystalline clear. When you're not tainting it, when you're not making it mean something about you, when you're not dramatizing it and you're just allowing the vibration of the emotion in your body to be there and allowing it to move through you. It's actually a really beautiful thing. And what's interesting, a few months ago, I've been, I've been going through a lot in the last six months, a huge growth period, and it's been very painful and very amazing at the same time. Because every time I come through something, I, it's like being born again into a new stage and a new stage and a new stage and getting more and more open and, and happier and happier. But a few months ago, I was not good and I was shared with someone how sad I was and their response was maybe you should get some antidepressants and I was like what no this is like me just allowing myself to be sad I should be sad right and it's not just the me now that's sad right it's, it's the me from all the other times that I wasn't allowed that's sad and that's the thing with emotions, you know, when we feel an emotion in a moment, it's normally not the now and the here that we're feeling. <laughs> Sorry, my girls just bought me a stick to throw for her. Go, on, get him, go. Um, she's a swimmer. Um, it's normally not the now that's creating the emotion. It's the past that created the emotion that lives in our body. And it's the now that's triggering it up and reminding us of this 
emotion, right? And if we don't allow these emotions, we suppress them, we trap them inside, and then there is triggers for the future. So I'm reflecting on how unimportant I have been and how my shape was not allowed and how I was never seen as a person, as an individual, how I, I you know, what I want, what I want in the future, right? Of course, what I want in the future is what I gave, where I, allowing the other person to have their space and their shape and I want to be have someone find me fascinating and how my mind works fascinating and to find me mesmerizing and to want to spend time with me because they want to hear my thoughts on something or they're interested to see what I say about something and to be able to share that and, and in reverse you know and, and to be able to see the divine in each other you know it's going to be a beautiful thing one day when I find that and until then, I'm just gonna keep processing my emotions and allowing them. So sadness, sadness, the, 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 the feeling of the sadness in my body at the moment is a very expansive feeling where in the past, I used to curl around it and, and almost internalize it. And it became, it was almost, almost like when I was sad and crying and boohooing, it was almost like this, almost like a little bit of narcissism where it's like you're getting something out of it by being sad. Somehow it's making me important because my sadness and oh poor me, whereas at the moment I'm just breathing it out and allowing it. And I know that what will come next is anger. And you know what? I'm going to allow anger as well. I'm going to express my anger. I'm not going to harbor it inside and then take it out on some poor innocent victim who just happened to annoy me in that moment because I was angry, right? I'm going to express it. I'm going to do what I do best, which is beat the shit out of my staircase with a pillow. <laughs> While screaming like a banshee. <laughs> and that's okay, because that's getting the energy of the anger out of my body. And you know, we're not taught, we're not taught as children to express emotions. We're taught that emotions are bad. Oh, sometimes we're allowed to be happy. And in fact, that's encouraged, but we're not allowed to be sad. We're not allowed to be angry. We're not allowed to be jealous. And yet, these things are all a part of who we are, a part of us as human beings, and this is what makes us whole. And now she wants a treat. Okay, hello. Say hello. Hmm. Sandy face. I'm gonna have to wash her when I get home. So I'm not quite sure. I'm hoping you get something out of this video. I'm just wanting to share where I'm at, but also share that you know what? It's okay to have emotions, and it's okay to have emotions that we term negative because they're not negative. They're just who we are and they're a part of us. And it's when we trap them, when we resist them, that the problems come. When this energy is in our body, the problems come, not only in making us sick, but as in they're impacting our life because they're always there in the underlying current of what's going on in every each and every moment. And it becomes a state of being, right? But just as allowing these negative emotions, and I'm doing this because I don't see them as negative right now, I just see them as emotions just as allowing these negative emotions to pass through and to not hold on to them it's really important to also allow the positives to not hold on to the happiness to not hold on to the joy to not grab it because i saw that in myself when i started this like big learning curve six months ago because i wasn't allowing the negative stuff in my body and to go through i was also i was holding on to it right i was also holding on to the positive so when something good happened to me when i got a compliment or um you know something you know, someone looked at me a certain way, I would hold on to it and I would I would hold on to it like a like a squirrel with an acorn and I would pull it out later to look at it and oh and, and think about it. And you know, we're not meant to be a dam. We're not meant to be holding all of this stuff inside. We're meant to be like a bridge over a river. The tide comes and the tide goes. The good the sadness comes, the sadness goes. The happiness comes, the happiness goes. And we're just allowed to, or meant to, just have these emotions moving through us. And, you know, when we hold on to them, when we trap them inside, we do it as a, a, a form of control because we're trying to control our pain. We're kind of trying to control how we feel about things. But in reality, all we do is take away from the beauty of life because we're not responding, we're reacting to things. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this. <laughs> I'm going to go throw my stick at my girls. Oh, shh. Yes, I know. It's a stick. It's a stick. So I will see you guys later.